podcasting in HD audio and HD video. This is the Digvid Film. Welcome to Digvid Film's second podcast. Today we'll be talking with people about their interests. What? Hi, welcome to Cornish and Coffee. Okay, listen up. I want a caramel macchiato grande. Double up on the wind. Try to go on the wind. Stop! In the name of justice. Hey, Jesus. 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 Now, thanks to the superhero supply store, I can take out the bad guys and I look good. So, Kurt, how long have you been working in the film industry? Oh, wow. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of late for class right now, but um, let's see. I started working back in the 70s um, when the cameras were so hot you could probably fry eggs on them. And I've been doing it since, so over 30 years. So, what movies have you worked on? Well, current, the most current ones I've worked on was uh, called The Details. It's with Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire. Uh, and we're currently working on a film called Rogue Saints, which is about um, a young man's falling away from the Lord Jesus and then what happens to him in the church to bring him back to the Lord. I'm really excited about the Christian films right now. I'm most excited about that. So what is your favorite memory from working on a set? Well, there's a maxim that happens on set, and that is what happens on the set stays on the set and I guess I can tell you kind of a general picture and that is a very very famous movie star who everybody would recognize if I said her name but she had a thing in her contract that said that if I had eye contact with her or anybody had eye contact with her she'd fire you oh. so uh, kind of scary oh yeah yeah so how long have you been teaching digital video and film then um well this is my third year and teaching third and so three yeah three years what have you taught in Digvid Film? Well, we've tried to teach the whole gamut of stuff. We've taught um, how to set up a camera, how to focus a camera, uh, how to edit your videos when you're done videoing. And currently, we're doing these podcasts, which are really fun. So what is your favorite memory from Digvid? Well, last year, we were trying to do this shadow thing on one of the films we were shooting. It's called it's called Ghost. And uh, I'm late for class. I got to go there. And this, this thing that we were shooting was, um, we were shooting this one guy up against a wall. And Colin, I hope you look at this, because I thought that was probably the funniest scene. He kept goofing up the shot and we had to retake it a lot. So it was just funny because we were trying to get him behind a white sheet and it was just his shadow, it wasn't him at all. So it was kind of cool. One more question. Yeah. How are you feeling about this year's Digivin class? I'm really, really excited about this class. You guys are awesome. I love you all and I'm really excited to see you guys continue in this vein and to keep learning more. You know, you guys have got such an advantage being at home school, especially with teachers who really care about you and love you. They want to see you succeed, not only in school, but in life as a whole. And you know, Digivid Film has a lot of training in terms of what you guys are going to be doing when you get older. So that's my heart and my desire. Okay, I got to run. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. It's Matthew. How were you first introduced to filmmaking? Well, I was introduced into film by, uh, it was kind of, a, it was a progression, it was step by step going up. Um, when I was little and I was wanting to, I was getting into books and stuff, I did not like books. I hated to read anything, it didn't matter what it was, reading was uh, a disgust to me. It was terrible. And so I would, I'd be avoiding the reading quite a bit. My dad said, enough, I'm going to get you to read something. I'm going to get you interested. So he got me comic books. I got more into the art side of it, so I would draw a lot. I didn't even get into the reading part. I mean, the storyline was cool. The storylines, I love stories. And then I realized that a comic book is a thing on the page. It's just, it's just there. There's no life to it. But a film, it's moving, you've got sound, you have everything. So a film is basically a live action comic book if you think about it. Um, one of my friends got a camera for his birthday. That was about eight years ago, I believe. And so I started making films with him over time. And 
at that time and until now, we still make short films. And would you say that filmmaking is more like a job to you or a glorified hobby? It would be more of a glorified hobby than a job. Um, it's something I think is meant to have fun with. And if you don't have fun with it, then it's like, what's the point? If you don't like it, it it's more of a, it's more something that I think I have a passion for doing it. If it was a job, you have so many aspects of filmmaking, either editing sound, anything, screenwriting, it goes on. What part, since I do most of it, what part would I want to choose? I don't know. It would probably be screenwriting if it was a job, but right now it's more of a glorified hobby. Are you usually in front of the camera or behind it? Uh, like I said, do all of it. And what accomplishments have you succeeded in so far in filmmaking? Well, I would say um, a bunch of short films have been made that I've helped out with. Uh, I've got um, Legacy of Sherwood is a film I helped out with with my friends. Um, that was an hour long, so I would say that would be an accomplishment. An hour long working on it for a year, about. And uh, oh, what was it? the oh, The Last of Us by Noah Martin who is actually in this class. Um, yeah, I helped out with that quite a bit as director of photography. And um, yeah, that, that was pretty good. Getting video show in the theater, that, that's pretty cool too. Having a crowd come by and watch, I'd say that's an accomplishment. As a home stager, one of the things I get to do is shop. And who doesn't like to shop? I love to shop. I like to go out, I like to pick out special things for the homeowners and things that are going to make that house just sparkle and pop. Uh, <laughs> and staging day, it's a great day. We get to load up the car with all the cool stuff we picked out for that particular house. I get to put my drill in there, I get to put all my, har my hardware and my tools in there, load everything up and head out. I'm Ray Bloom with Remax 5 Star Team and we use Blue Vase Design exclusively. And if you want to sell your home fast, you should too. So give us a chance. We would love to have an opportunity to work with you and we want you to know what the blue vase is all about, but you won't know unless you hire us. Podcasting in HD audio and HD video. This is the Digvid Film. My name is Caleb Holmes. I am from Richmond, Washington, and I have directed three films, three short films so far. Awesome. So, what motivates you to be a movie maker? Well, originally it started with Star Wars. Uh, it was around episode, when I saw episode two, and I've always been a fan of George Lucas, and so that kind of got me started interested in filmmaking. But after I, I matured in my view, I began learning more about the uh, independent Christian movement. I realized that not only could I tell amazing stories, I could also influence culture. So that's kind of driven me beyond the, uh, the uh, special effects and beyond the great stories. It's, it's the culture impact. Yeah, well, being a movie maker, it must be hard to like, come up with ideas and getting everything together. But what motivates you to really continue What motivates me is um, trying to achieve that next level, knowing that I'm not perfect that there's always another step I can do, there's always something better. I can, I can become better at, at many different things, from a director, writer, etc. Also, the idea that there are more stories to be told, uh, better stories to be told, uh, told in different ways. Uh, I've told, you know, like, only three stories so far, and I can, I can tell Western now, or I can tell a science fiction story now. So there's many different directions I can go, and I just feel a big passion for telling very cool stories. So, what has been like, some of the biggest things that you have learned from being a movie maker? Well, there's a lot of things I've learned. Sometimes there's some specifics about the filmmaking industry, but one of it was uh, that you can't do things alone. Big projects like these, you need some people around you to support you. I can do a lot of stuff by myself because I have a passion, but I, I kind of sometimes I feel um, flimsy sometimes where I can't go to the next step. It helps to have other people around you who know what they're doing to give you that extra push to do things that you can't do, um, that it really helps to have a team um, to support you. Yeah, well, when you're being a movie maker, like, anyone can say, oh, I'm going to be a movie maker, but what are some qualities 
that you should have to it'll be helpful when you're being a movie maker? Well, a big thing I think would be passion. You've got to be really passionate about what you do. You've got to enjoy the idea of making, of telling stories. Another thing would be um, leadership. You've got to be able to, to take a step out and say, all right, here's what we're going to do. Um, this is why. Um, you also have to be very thoughtful and, and insightful to why you do certain things. Um, the motivations behind characters, well, it depends on what you want to go to. In script writing, the, the writer probably has to have the most insight because he has to basically lay the foundation. The director also has to have a lot of insight for what the actors are thinking and also the crew behind the scenes. Um, you've got to be a good team player because this involves lots of different people. If you don't know how to work with people, then your film is going to fall apart. Well, the thing that's in influenced me the most in the Christian movement has been uh, the San Antonio Independent Christian Film Festival and all the people involved there. I've got a DVD set with 10 DVDs and it's a bunch of different um, directors and people involved and mainly Jeff Botkin, he was the one who kind of spearheads that with, um, I forget his name, the guy who was in charge of Vision Forum. Um, also, uh, names aren't coming to my, my mind exactly, but the guys who did um, Facing the Giants, I, I really um, admire them for their, their dedication to the Word of God and for producing films. So it, everybody who's involved with that, pretty much, because they, they bring in people who are very, um, very strong Christians who know what they're doing, and I've learned a lot from those people. Um, people who've, uh, who've written scripts, guys who, who go out and are really good with cameras, but specifically the Botkin family, because you've got Jeff Botkin, who he was originally a Marxist, went into filmmaking, and then wanted to raise up Christians to go into filmmaking. And his son, Isaac Botkin, who was really into the special effects thing, and he's, he's, uh, he's got a blog out at OutsideHollywood.com, and he has a lot of insight there. I go there pretty, pretty often to, uh, to get some, his insight on the new technology or script writing. So those are some big influences. What do you think most movie makers start, or why most movie makers start making movies? A big draw for a lot of people, not necessarily me, is, is well, maybe a little bit, that's how it started, was the, kind of the glamour. They see these movies, these awesome films, special effects, stories, etc., and they say, wow, I would love to be a part of that. I'd love to make that. That what gets a lot of people started. Um, but another big drive is the idea of telling stories, not so much the flashy special effects or the flashy films. It's the idea that there are interesting stories to be told, and to tell them well and tell them creatively is, is partially a challenge and partially an adventure. Hey, we're here with Gus Shalo, a snowboarding enthusiast, for a special interview. Gus, why did you first start snowboarding? Well, I just thought it looked fun and I wanted to try it out and see what it was like. So what's the biggest jump you've ever done? Uh, probably a waterfall. It's like 10 feet tall and maybe 15 feet long. Wow. So, have you ever been in like a super dangerous situation? Snowboarding? Yeah, I was in the Thai Bowl and there was like really steep terrain and lots of trees and there was kind of cliffs and it was so steep you couldn't really stop once you got going so you kind of had to find like an open spot and kind of guide away from the trees as best you could so it was pretty dangerous. So what got you in? What got you into there? Why? Why'd you go in there? Well, one of my friends said he knew an easy trail. It looked really hard, but he said he knew the easy trail, and it wasn't very easy. <laughs> he missed a turn. All right, and what's your favorite place to snowboard? Uh, Stevens Pass. And what's like your favorite run there? You like doing terrain? Or... Probably, yeah, the train park. Yeah, I love it. Um, and what do you consider the best thing about snowboarding? Well, probably going in powder and just finding natural jumps and jibbing off trees and stuff. Is that kind of your goal to get better at that? Or? Not really. I just want to get better at, in the train park. Is that your is that your goal? Yeah, pretty much. Have you already started accomplishing it? Or? Yeah, I went off the waterfall. That was one of my main goals. Uh -huh. and do you have any hobbies besides snowboarding? Um, not really. Well, I play sports, but I play basketball. Basketball. Pretty cool. What's your biggest inspiration on the field of sports? 
What or who? Who. Oh, who. Um, hmm. We're in snowboarding, so I'll say Sean White. Podcasting in HD audio and HD video. This is the Digvid Film. Hands up, camera. Camera's ready. Slate. Scene four, take two. Go. See what? See what? Take what? Wow. Light it up. Scene six, take five. Action. It's a nut car fuel with annoying. <laughs> Action. Plus, with the eco car, only if it's fun. So you will have an excellent excuse not to carpool with annoying co workers. Yeah. Cut. Nice.